This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, hi folks, um, I'm here with uh, my photography group, uh, Port Renfrew and uh, Paul Thompson, and I've just sneak, sneaked off really quickly. Uh, I wanted to really try out this uh, this new tilt lens, this is the 30 millimeter uh, Fujifilm tilt shift lens, and uh, I found a really great composition for it. Uh, this was something that I tried last weekend, where I have this Salal in the foreground, and this sweeping log and then the leaning western red cedar in the background. And now it's not too bad today, but last week the Salau was moving around quite a bit with the uh, with the wind. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to try the, the tilt feature on this. So basically what I'm able to do is change the plane of focus so that I'm focused on the Salau and also uh, the cedar in the background. And what that enables me to do is is not have to use such a, a high uh, f-stop like f16 or f11 so i'm shooting at f8 and uh, i should be able to get well those sections sharp but you may notice when i when i um, put this image uh, in the video here that below the plane of focus uh, the focus will start to fall away so you still have to stop down you know f11 uh, ideally uh, but the nice thing is you don't have to do as much focus stacking to get everything in sharp focus. And actually the light's really good right now. So I'm going to take some shots. Let's just see here. Uh, actually, I'm just going to change the exposure here. Because the light is just a bit too bright. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, will I be purchasing this lens? Probably not. And the reason being is that it is massive. Uh, it weighs over a kilogram and it's a lot of lens. Uh, and of course it's a fixed focal length. It's 30 millimeters. Uh, I think I can get away when we're 20 to 35, but you know, it's a lot of fun to, to try out. Uh, you may have noticed they also have the new GFX uh, 100 version two uh that is also a loner that is not mine uh will i be purchasing one of those probably not um i'll probably wait for some a used one to pop up at some point what i really love about this camera the most is the this bit here the viewfinder that articulates that i really love that feature uh but I don't think I'll be buying another one right now. I already have two. I don't need a third one. <laughs> I just can't afford it. <laughs> I'd have to get another mortgage out.
I'd like to just take a moment to express my gratitude to Squarespace for sponsoring my latest video and supporting my channel. One of the features that I really appreciate the most about my Squarespace website is the ease with which I can update galleries and pages both from my desktop computer and through the Squarespace app on my smartphone. This allows me to edit my website quickly and elegantly without needing to have any coding knowledge. If this sounds appealing to you, I encourage you to visit squarespace.com and give it a try for free. If you decide to make a purchase, don't forget to use the code Adam Gibbs for a 10% discount on your first order. That's the problem with Paul, he's always in the way. I show him all my secret spots, and then he just gets in my way. What are you doing now? You're not gonna vlog this, are you? Yep. Well then you'll do them, you'll be taking the same photographs as me. No, we won't. <laughs> we'll move slightly further apart, it'll be all good. Oh. Mm, soggy Sony now. So we've uh come out to this waterfall. Uh, I've, I've been here a number of times, but I don't think I've vlogged it for quite a few years now, especially not in the fall. Uh, and it's still quite nice. There's, uh, there's some big leaf maples kind of uh, draped over some of the rocks here. So it's really quite pretty. And luckily this waterfall is in the shade. So it's quite sunny right now. And I don't think the sun's gonna be coming, coming around for a while. So, I think we might have saved the day by coming here. Uh, of course, you know, it'd be nice to get a, some better light in here, but I think it'll, I think it'll work in these conditions. Uh, I, I keep looking up here because the sun is kind of behind the hill here. So uh, yeah, let's see what we can, uh, what we can come up with. But I better get there before Paul because he's going to take all the good shots. You've got to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> This is a really beautiful waterfall. It, it's not that big, but it's just where it's situated is really quite pretty, especially with this peninsula coming out uh, with the moss uh, on it. And of course, with the, the maple leaves right now, there used to be uh, two logs above this that kind of ruined the shot, but they're now gone. So uh, it's cleaned it up considerably, which is really great. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to try and get some shots from this side and Paul is down on the other side and then once we've finished we'll probably switch around because there aren't that many angles of view uh, or perspectives that you get from of this waterfall. Um, I just absolutely love though that there's still some maiden hair ferns on the cliffs above the waterfall and uh, of course we have the maples so yeah it's really pretty. The only problem that I am going to have is that, and I think I had the same problem here last time I was here, is there is a bit of a breeze coming down here. So if I want to try and get all the foliage in sharp focus, then I'm probably going to have to take a few shots at a faster shutter speed, higher ISO, and then sandwich those with uh, the images of the waterfall itself. So I'll probably use a different, uh, like a slower shutter speed for that. Okay, I think I found a pretty decent composition. The hardest part right now though is uh, keeping the mist off the front of the lens. I have put on a case uh, polarizer and the reason being is that the rocks are quite shiny. With that polarizer, it just, just separates the water from the darker rocks behind. I'll show you really quickly the composition I have and I think I like this one because it does have a little bit of uh, foreground to it which does tend to give it a bit more depth. So. As you can see by looking through here, uh, I just included this one little leaf over here and of course I have this little buttress here with all the beautiful fall foliage. These two trees up here that I quite like and then of course all the foliage here and then the waterfall. The only part that I wish was a little bit different was some separation between the buttress and the waterfall here. I've tried all different types of angles and I just can't get high enough to be able to get that separation. So 
a bit of a compromise. I just have to make do with what I have here. But I, I think it's a really lovely image and uh, or a really lovely composition. And I think it will turn out quite well. So uh, here it is. Paul and I have uh, switched over. I never really uh, liked this angle for some reason, uh, but I'm, I am going to give it a go. There's a really great rock with uh, maple leaves just kind of sitting on top of it. So it makes it a really nice foreground. The biggest problem I'm having right now is it's really quite dark in here. And the shutter speed at F16 is around two seconds, which is too slow for the water. It just makes it look like mush. So what I've decided to do is uh, shoot the scene at f5.6, f8, up the ISO and get a faster shutter speed. And then I'll focus stack uh, the image together. There's also some ferns that are moving around quite a bit. So I have to really jack up the ISO and, uh, and get a fast shutter speed to stop the movement of those. I much prefer to do images just in one shot, but if I have to focus stack and, and all that kind of business, then I'll do it. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a huge deal. It doesn't take that long, but it is just an extra step. All right, I thought I'd try out the, uh, the 30 millimeter Fujifilm tilt shift lens uh, for this scene. I, uh, I borrowed it off Fuji for a few days. Uh, I haven't used it that much because actually when I did a workshop, one of the fellows on the workshop, he actually purchased one and of course he hadn't got it yet. So he really wanted to try it out. In terms of sharpness, uh, it is amazing. It's really, really sharp lens. Uh, the tilt and shift is superb, uh, really helps with some scenes, not all scenes. So I think this lens is really directed towards either architectural photography or perhaps studio photography. When it comes to landscape photography, if you're working out of your car, that'd be great, but backpacking with it, that might be a bit of a problem. Uh, there's some really great features on here. If you want to take verticals or horizontals, there's a button on the side here, so you can turn the camera. It does have a, um, a lens collar, which is awesome because the lens is, lens is so heavy. If I had the camera mounted to the tripod and that lens sticking out, that's a lot of weight to have on the front of the camera. Uh, in terms of uh, filters, that is also a bit of a problem. This camera doesn't take the filters that I have. There is a, a lens shade that comes with the camera. You have to unscrew this ring on the front and the lens shade fits on the front of the camera and then you can use filters. But the filters are, I think they're 110, so you'd have to use 110 filters. So again, more stuff to carry. And the reason why it needs such large filters is if you're using any tilt or shift, then if you just had a normal filter on here, you might get big netting. With a larger filter, it gives you lots of room to use that image circle that's projected onto your sensor. Now this scene here, it works pretty good. Got the uh, foreground in sharp focus. I've got the top of the falls in sharp focus, all wide open. The problem is in the midground here, we have this buttress that's come down and the plane of focus kind of goes right through the middle of it. So the top of it won't be sharp. So for me to get that sharp, I'm still going to have to stop the lens down. 
So there are scenes where a tilt shift lens works exceptionally well, but there are other scenes where you might have to play around a little bit with it to try and get everything sharp in the same plane of focus. And some of you are probably wondering, well, why would you want to use a lens like this? Primarily, uh, you know, like I said earlier, there's ferns moving. So ideally, it would be great to stop down to perhaps f8, use a little bit of tilt to get everything in the same plane of focus. And then, of course, I can use a faster shutter speed. Uh, but as I said in an earlier video, nowadays you can focus that quite easily, it's quite an easy process. So does it really, miss, uh, you know, does it really justify purchasing a lens like that? I can't answer that question. Will I be purchasing this lens? Probably not. And the biggest reason is just the weight. Uh, all the other things I can live with, but the weight is just too, too much. I have a 20 to 35, that's an amazing lens from Fujifilm, and it's just way more versatile. But this lens is really fun to try out, and of course, I'm lucky enough to be able to borrow one for a week or two, and I'll certainly utilize it. I also have the 110 macro tilt shift lens that I haven't used yet. I didn't bring it today uh, because I didn't want to carry it around. Well, once again, thank you ever so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to uh, leave a thumbs up. That's always, always appreciated. For the last part of this video, I'd like to leave you with a few uh, photographs that I made while I was teaching a workshop on the west coast of Vancouver Island with my friend Paul Thompson. If you're interested in checking out some workshops for 2024 on Vancouver Island, be sure to head on over to my website at adamgibbs.com. You'll find a number of workshops with my friend Alistair Ben, Brian Barnum and Paul Thompson. So go check those out. All right, guys, until next time, bye-bye.